स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया we'll be talking about parasites infecting the cns today now there are uh, few parasites which are mainly they are free living amoebae of the genera acanthamoeba balamutria negleria and sapnia which have been discovered to have to be causing um, serious infection like um, granulomatous amoebic meningohunkerflitis which is a serious and fatal disease they are important cause of disease in human and animals negleria fowleri produces an acute and usually lethal central nervous system disease called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis acanthamoeba species and balamutria species are opportunistic for free living amoebae and they are also capable of causing granulomatous amoebic encephalitis gae in individuals with compromised immune systems while sapnia pedata has been recently implicated in a case of amoebic encephalitis now they are all free living amoebae but they are increasingly becoming more common in causing uh, meningoencephalitis that is they are important genera which are becoming which have been seen to be pathogenic usually they live in soil and water bodies and the negleria like is aerobic while acanthamoeba is like gut entamoeba it is anaerobic and but the, they have no response to mainstay treatment of amoebiasis like metronidazole and midazole they do not respond to these drugs and they cause usually in meningoencephalitis acanthamoeba species can also cause corneal ulceration in some patients who are using contact lenses in water which has got these amoebae trifizoids now when we talk about negleria fowleri it has got three morphological forms amoebo flagellate form a biflagellate um, trifizoid form and a cyst now the amoeboid trophozoid that is there that is in a elongate structure which is 10 to 20 mm micron by 7 microns millimicrons it is an actively motile and dividing form it is the feeding form and it is also seen in soil while the biflagellate form is the non feeding form two flagellate has got and the other non dividing forms cyst on the other hand is a smooth walled cyst which has got which is 7 to 15 millimicron in diameter and it is present only in external environment it is never seen in human body so three forms are seen morphological forms now primary amoebic meningoencephalitis is a very rare form of parasitic meningitis that causes a brain infection that is usually fatal like i told you earlier it is caused by microscopic amoebae uh, which is a single celled living organism Now, Negleria fowleri. How do they cause infection? They cause when the water-containing amoeba enters the body through the nose. So these infections are rare. In ten years from 2006 to 2015, barely 37 infections were reported in United States, and there were only two survivors. You can imagine the case fatality of these cases. But it is seen to be found around the world. How does it spread? The amoeba can be found in bodies of warm, fresh water, such as lakes and rivers. in the geothermally or naturally hot water lakes the swings that are there warm water discharge from industrial plants untreated natural hot drinking water sources swimming pools if they are poorly maintained or not minimally chlorinated or unchlorinated they are also seen in water heaters they could be seen in soil as well so what happens is they enter through the nose and they travel up the nose to the brain and where it destroys the brain tissue Now, typically, it occurs when people go swimming or you know diving in warm, fresh water places, or submerge their heads, or cleans their pores with this, or they do irrigate their sinuses or noses with this contaminated tap water. Negleria is seen to grow best at higher temperatures, up to you know 46 degrees centigrade, and can survive for short periods at higher temperatures also. It is not found in salt water like ocean, but it is. it usually is not one person is not infected by drinking contaminated water it only and so the spread is not usually common from a person to person but it comes from a warm water containing the trifizoid which enters through the nose and goes to the brain tissue now life cycle entire life cycle is completed in external environment that is there is a cyst is there which could be present in the water bodies 
this cyst excitation occurs in favorable conditions and amoeboid trophozoites are formed. Amoeboid trophozoites that are there, they are the ones which are infective forms by swimming or by inf inhalation of dust with cysts, they can be inhaled and they lead on to human infection or they could be, bi they, uh, they could also change to biflagellate forms which spread to other new uh, water bodies or cyst form which live in the environment, okay. So basically like I told you, a person gets infected through the water which are swimming through water which contains these amoebae, they enter through the nose, they go to the respiratory tract and then you know through olfactory nerve they can go on to the brain tissue. So the cyst that is there, it comes out in the, that is there in the uh, water body, it can either be in the biflagellate form or in the uh, amoeboid form. Amoeboid form is the one which causes infection, biflagellate form keeps dividing and further infecting more water bodies. So pathogenesis when we talk about disease it is commonly seen to occur in young children, young adults and incubation period is up till 2 to 15 days. Parasite enters through nasal form, nasal mucosa I told you goes to cribriform plate along the olfactory nerve goes to brain and causes increased for amoebae formation in the brain which destroy the brain tissue. Patient will complain of severe headache, signs of meningism might be there, uh, he might have cranial nerve paralysis and my patient may die within a week. This Nuglaria filarec has been able to be demonstrated in brain tissue under UV microscopy. It can also cause humidifier fever which is a form of allergic alveolitis. This occurs due to amoebae which grow in air coolers, inhalation of the air of the air coolers could lead on to this infection and usually this infection occurs along with symbiosis with Legionella and Listeria. These two organisms could also be present in the air coolers and they could cause this form of disease. So signs and symptoms of primary amoebic encephalitis would be that the early stages the patient will have uh, same signs and symptoms similar to any bacterial meningitis and usually they start within 1 to 7 days. Initial symptoms would be like any bacterial meningitis so there will be headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, stiff neck would be there. <coughs> Later symptoms however include the confusion, patient uh, lack of attention to uh, surroundings loss of balance, seizures and may have hallucinations. After the start of the symptoms, the disease progresses rapidly and usually causes death within a week or so, less than a week, maybe in 5 days, 1 to 12 days. Diagnosis, usually uh, since primary amoebic and uh, meningoencephalitis is rare, not more than 8 cases reported every year in the United States. Early symptoms are more likely to be caused by other common causes, so that is why DD sometimes is difficult between bacterial and viral meningitis. Patients uh, should seek medical help immediately because when if there is a sudden onset of fever, headache, stiff neck and vomiting, especially after having uh, bathed or having swum in a warm water because their you know, diagnosis should be as early as possible to uh, save the patient from death. For a diagnosis, mainly one needs a CSF sample and this CSF sample we do microscopy, wet mount is done and we look at the motile amoeboid trophozoites if they are there. You can also do, suppose you get tissue, you can uh, do uh, histopath staining, hematoxylon um, and eosin staining and you see these trophozoites that can be seen. Then biochemically, the bio, if the CSF, if you see the protein, sugar and uh, picture would be similar to biogenic meningitis. But these trophozoites, either you see the trophozoites in, or you could you know, stain them with trichrome staining or other things which you can gene sustain smear, you could see in the CSF. You can also do culture, grow these in an aerobic culture. What is done is that 1.5% nutrient agar plate is taken, it is seeded with Escherichia coli culture, it is grown and on that if you see this sample which contains the organism, this it will cause next day when you come, you will see that there is clearing of areas that is it eats away the E. coli colonies and if this area if you make a microscopy, you will see trophozoites or you, you know in these areas. You can also wash it in sterile water and you can see conversion to bioflagellate forms from this clearing area and this is definitely diagnostic or proves the presence of the uh, disease. Treatment, several drugs are effective against um, uh, Nigleria fowlera in the lab, however the effectiveness is unclear since their actions, all infections have been fatal, very few have patients have been possible to get treated. Drug of choice is amphotericin B. Few patients survive treatment of high doses of rimfampensis and infrotericin B. Prevention is usually that one should try and avoid this amoebae entering through 
from fresh water um, lakes and all which have been not used for long or swimming pools which have not been uh, you know properly maintained and one should not irrigate noses or you know through water which is not properly uh, which is not hygienic water or which has not been treated properly so that is the only way one can prevent this because one should only try to focus on limiting the entry of these amoebae into the nose and further disease because they are difficult to treat another important uh, amoeba is acanth amoeba this is a microscopic free living amoeba again a single cell living organism which is commonly found in the environment and that can cause rare but a very severe illness it can cause three types of illnesses you know it appears a, this kind of amoeba uh, trophozoite is there which is uh, which has got pseudopodia it can cause uh, infection of the eye in that case it is known as acanth amoeba keratitis or it can cause infection of the brain and spinal cord then it is known as granulomatous encephalitis or infection can spread throughout the anterior body and it, it will cause disseminated infection causal agents the acanthamoeba species are commonly found in lakes swimming pools tap water heating and air conditioning units several species have been known to cause but including culbert sonai polyphaga and so many other species seven species are known to infect humans culbert sonai is the one which is most commonly seen and causes this encephalitis two morphological forms are seen trophozoite and cyst the amoeboid trophozoites or the cysts both of them are infective to humans the pathogen is found in worldwide it is found in the environment in soil dust fresh water sources i like i told you earlier it can also be found in sea water brackish water this can be found in swimming pools hot tubs drinking water facilities ventilating air conditioning units so human nostrils they can be found sometimes to uh, be lying uh, you know dormant in human nostrils and throats also or in tissues which have been infected for long so the canthamoeba would occur in soil and uh, water they need to be you know basically they remain in for years in this conditions either in trophozoite form or in cyst form and both of them are infective the infection is caused either through inhalation or through contamination of traumatized skin or eyes it can enter through skin or eyes also if there is some trauma they can enter primary infection would be skin and lungs getting involved and finally there is this hematogenous spread which leads on to brain infection that is granulomatous amoebic encephalitis which is not a very common thing but it does occur and but no spread from a human to human or a, a person to person has been seen life cycle like i told you the cyst and the trophozoites are there in the environment they can either be inhaled or they can enter through skin or some trauma and they go on to the respiratory tract infection or to to the blood stream infection and finally they can be disseminated to brain again or to other areas now it usually it has an indolent course the granulomatous amoebic encephalitis typically it affects the chronically ill or debilitated patients and usually it might present as a sol or as a space occupying lesion rarely cysts ra rapidly change on to trophozoites and the nucleus in nasal mucous membrane and it could be from plate and go on to meningeal encephalitis but mostly it presents as a solitary or maybe space occupying lesion sometimes it produce keratitis especially in, in can, can people who wear contact lenses and if they have not used a proper uh, water or you know not clean the lenses properly or if there is perforation of cornea it can lead on to loss of vision also most non ocular lesions are caused caused by uh, canthamoeba culbertsoni while the ocular lesions are caused by um, canthamoeba polyphaga clinical signs and symptoms a canthamoeba keratitis will varies greatly from person to person patient can have eye pain redness blurred vision sensitivity to light sensation of something in the eye excessive tearing can be there because there are similarities with symptoms of other eye infections so early diagnosis is important or granulomatous infect uh, maybe encephalitis patients will have symptoms of mental status changes like headache neck stiffness nausea and vomiting similar to meningitis but he might have loss of coordination fever muscular weakness or partial paralysis of any part of the body they could be double vision sensitivity to light and other neurological symptoms also disseminated infection can occur both with and without granulomatous amoebic encephalitis and typically it shows as inflammation of the lungs or sinuses and may also show infection of the skin but has the potential to spread to the brain skin infections usually they appear as reddish nodules skin ulcers or abscesses in the skin while well, these infections usually we find to occur in, to be occurring in compromised human beings 
who have an immunocompromised system. So, who is at risk? Most people who wear contact lenses can develop infection if they do not uh, take um, enough precautions. Storage and handling of lens if improper or in, you could disinfect the lenses not properly using tap water or not clean solutions. Swimming in a hot tub uh, or showering you while wearing lenses, coming in contact with contaminated water or maybe having a history of trauma to cornea, such in patients are more likely to get the infection through the eye. Disseminated infection will occur in patients who are uh, immunocompromised uh, immune systems and who are chronically ill. Treatment, no satisfactory treatment is available for GAE. Unfortunately, most cases of brain and spinal cord infection are fatal. Several patients have been successfully treated though with combinations of pentamidine, sulfadiazine, flucytosine and either fluconazole or atroconazole. GA in AIDS patient was treated successfully with sulfadiazine, parimethamine and fluconazole combined with surgical resection of the CNS lesion. Meningitis was also treated successfully in two children using oral methoprim, sulfamethoxol, rifampicin and ketoconazole. So any of the combination of these drugs might be effective. Disseminated cutaneous infection in an immunocompromised patient was treated successfully with IV pentamidine, chlorexidine and 2% cotoconazole cream followed by oral itraconazole or uh, voriconazole and amphotericin B lipid complex. Cysts of MEB keratitis usually they respond if treated early to a combination of neomycin drops, dipromamide ointment, propamide isothionate drops. Antimicrobial susceptibility testing of acanthamoeba isolates is advisable. Differences in drug sensitivity between different species can occur. So, this is important to know uh, the antimicrobial susceptibility. Also, it can be different in strains of the single species also. So, this will help in treatment. Lab diagnosis, the specimens usually which you expect to get are CSF, brain tissue if it is involved, skin or any other tissue or corneal scraping. So, fresh Mounts can be prepared, they can be frozen, they can be paraffin fixed and they can be stained. You can uh, do immunofluorescent staining look for the amoebae or you could do direct staining and look for the amoebae, trichrome and other staining. So, microscopy you look for trophozoids, cysts can be seen. Further, you can also grow them, that is you grow them in triptych soy agar with horse blood or BCY agar and the growth is similar to Nigleria foliolae and you could see that there is clearing of those areas. And there, if you wash that area, you will see trophozoids being formed. Balamuthia mandril, mandrillaris is a free living amoeba again, a single celled amoeba naturally found in our environment. It can also cause a rare and serious infection of the brain and spinal cord called granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. Scientists at CDC first discovered this uh, organism in 1986 and it was found in the brain of a dead mandrill ba baboon. After extensive research, a new de they declared a new species, Bab Balamuthia bendrilaris in 1993. Since then, around 200 cases of uh, infection have been diagnosed worldwide, with at least 70 being reported in United States. Little is known as to at this time about how a person gets infected by Balamuthia though. So, the infection could occur if it is present in dust and soil in many places, dust containing could be breathed in or gets in the mouth may also live in water, so they can enter, but usually spread from person to person is not seen except through organ donation or system, uh, you know, transplantation. It, they have been isolated from aut autopsy specimens, soil containing this, if it comes in contact with skin, so it could travel either through skin, through ingestion, through inhalation and can travel to the brain, through the bloodstream and can cause gram uh, granulomatous, maybe encephalitis, more common in uh, immunocompromised than in healthy patients. Uh, the organism has two stages, cysts and trophozoites again. The cyst is a double laid structure and trophozoite is this, you know, multi pseudopodia producing structure. No flagellate stage exists as part of the cycle and the trophozoites multiply by mitosis and they are the infective form. Although both cysts and uh, trophozoites can gain entry into the body, but the trophozoites are the one which are causing infection or which are the infective forms. So, these are the cysts and the trophozoite in the environment, they are multiplying and they are spreading uh, by changing into trophozoites. They both can enter into human being through nasal passages, through broken or ulcerated skin, go on to the respiratory tract and blood infection and going on to granulomatous infection. But in all this, the infection is caused through the amoebic form 
that is the cyst is not infected. As far as the clinical features are concerned, it can take two weeks, maybe weeks to months to develop. The first uh, symptoms could to develop uh, on exposure to amoebas. They can begin with a skin wound on face, chest, anywhere, or it can then and later it, the infection involves the brain. Present patient could present with amoebic meningoencephalitis. From early stages, patient might have headache, stiff neck, sensitivity to light, might have nausea, vomiting, difficulty in walking or other behavioral signs might be there, might be weight loss, might be partial paralysis, tiredness, low grade fever. So, all these symptoms should be looked into closely if a patient gives history of having, you know, been infected with, uh, come in contact with these amoebae and the disease, the disease is fatal and death occurs in more than 89 percent cases. Diagnosis usually is diagnosed only after breath because mostly it is difficult to be able to know that the patient could be, you know, have got uh, infection with this. You could get a blood sample, CSF sample, a tissue sample and diagnosis is usually done by doing either a wet mount you could do. You cysts can be seen two layered with wrinkled ectocyst or biopsy you could do a permanent stain, HNE &E staining and you could do uh, calcoflow staining and look for cysts and amoebae in the tissues. You can also grow them on monkey kidney, HEP2 cell lines, Vero cell lines, but not agar plates where they grow and they can be seen as uh, you know uh, eating away the cells. So, the diagnosis of GA is in living patients is less common since they are difficult to identify under the microscope even commonly identified stains. Mostly the diagnosis is post-mortem in these cases. The Centers for Dis uh, Disease Control and Prevention CDC offers diagnostic assistance for biometric physicians and scientists through DPDX because they are difficult to diagnose. Tests that can help in confirmation of the diagnosis and differentiation to that to, from acanthamoeba could be one is culture on these uh, viral cell lines. Second could be indirect immunofluorescent assay. You can de detect antibodies attached to the cell surface of the organism in the brain tissue or somewhere or you could do PCR assay by which balamuthia DNA could be detected. So, these are the tests by which you could try to identify this disease. Treatment, although more than 200 cases have been detected worldwide, few patients have known to be survived. Early diagnosis and treatment is most important for increasing the chances of survival. Drugs used for granulomatous amoebic encephalitis caused by balamuthia include a combination of flucytosine, pentamidine, fluconazole, sulfadizine, you could also use azithromycin or calithromycin, clarithromycin. Recently, miltifacin has also been used. Two cases have been successfully treated with the combination of these along with a surgical resection of CNS lesion. Another case was treated successfully with pentamidine, fluconazole, sulfadizine and clarithromycin, but much more information is needed for treatment of these cases. Another organism, Sapnia, which has recently been uh, understood to have be causing a similar infection is again a free living amoeba or a cell which is found in the environment. There are no, no two known species of Sapnia, Sapnia diploidea and Sapnia pideta. The amoeba causes amoebic encephalitis which is an infection of the brain. Infection is similar to other free living amoeba infections such as Negleria, Balamuthia and Acanthamoeba infections. Only one case of amoebic encephalitis due to sapnia has been reported worldwide. In 1998, a healthy 38 year old man from Texas was diagnosed with this infection and the, all the patient was hospitalized, but he survived without any sequelae. Recently, however, the infection was re identified and be, has been known to be caused by sapnia pedata. It is found in the world, in the environment, in places where the elk and buffalo species are there, where the farm animals are known to eat rotting plants are there or fresh water sources. Even it is believed this person from Texas who became ill also got it from infection from contact with animal feces in his farm in Texas. The organism has two forms, trophozoite form and a cyst form. They enter the body through the nose, cuts and bruises on the body, but usually there are no person to person spread. All free living amoebae can live and multiply in the open environment without entering into a host or animal host. Two stages, both are binucleated. The trophozoite is oval, 40 to 70 millimicron, while cyst is mature and round, 15 to 30 millimicron uh, in diameter. They can infect anyone. The epidemiology, as far as the epidemiological features are concerned, sapnia can infect anyone that is a patient person with weakened immune systems or also a person with healthy immune systems who have been in contact with animal feces at a higher risk. 
it is likely that most cases are not reported because the amoeba is hard to identify. Infections uh, that involve the brain can be fatal and are often diagnosed late in the disease process and this though the only case that has been discovered so far was not fatal and has been treated well. Symptoms include headache, sensitivity to light, nausea, vomiting, blurry vision, loss of consciousness, a scan might reveal some kind of a tumor like mass on the in the brain which can also cause disease. Diagnosis that by from these tissue samples that you get, brain tissue, skin or respiratory samples, you need to demonstrate cysts and trophocytes. Both of them possess two nuclei. You can grow them in non-nutrient agar plate coated with bacteria E. coli, similar like similar to negleria. And if you coat it the next day, you might see that this organism has eaten away some of the culture and there if you do the staining, you would look for, you will see trophozoites there. You could also see trophozoites in the brain tissue or anywhere if you do histopath staining. Treatment for most cases, it is difficult or one identified case which was there, what they did was they removed the tumor that was there in the brain, they gave him a series of drugs after surgery and this led to patient's full recovery. Examination of the tumor tissue was done at CDC and they confirmed the species as sapnia which was causing the infection. But a free living was once thought to be not pathogenic, is now it is seen to be pathogenic, but can be treated with azithromycin, pentamidine, uh, itraconazole and flu cytosine combined with any surgical resection if needed. So that is how the treatment is done. And usually these infections, the only important thing is that they need to be treated fast. They need to be diagnosed fast and treated fast, otherwise they are infatal and they could lead on to a uh, lot of morbidity and hence they are important to be suspected early in disease. Thank you for listening uh, patiently to this important lecture on free living amoebae which were not earlier thought to be in pathogenic but now they are causing increasingly fatal um, infections of the brain and uh, tissue which is difficult to treat. Thank you.